Paper Alliance. Presidential Debate 2022. Do not adjust your sets. And welcome to the Pope Paul VI Learning Resource Center at the Catholic University of Eastern Africa in Nairobi. My name is Mark Masai of NTV. Najina Langoni is Ubeida Kome Kutoka Runinga ya KTN News. Kutoka Popotafali Ulipo, Nakukaribisha Katkam Dahalo Ho, Unawahusisha Wagumbea O Gavana Katka County and Nairobi. This is the final of two debates involving the nine candidates cleared to run for governor. In the second debate, we are hosting Senator Johnson Sakaja of the United Democratic Alliance, UDA, which is affiliated with the Kenya Kwanzaa Alliance, and Mr. Polycarp Igade of the Jubilee Party, member party of the Azimio Moja One Kenya Coalition Party. Kulingana na kanuni, zinazo simamia mdahalo huu, wawaniaji wanamuda wa dakika tisini, za kulumbana kupitia mailekezo na maswali kutoka kwangu na mwenzangu Mark. Maswali tumeabuni wenyewe na hayajajadiliwa na wahusika kwenye mjadala huu. And our questions are clustered into six segments each running for 15 minutes. As per our debate rules, each candidate has two minutes to make an opening statement, one and a half minutes to answer a question, and 60 seconds for a rebuttal. The topics have been carefully selected after a thorough assessment of sentiments of the regular residents and voters in the city of Nairobi. Na mailekezo yetu pia yanahitaji wagombea wanao shiriki mjadala huu kuzingatia tasfida wakati wa mjadala kumaanisha kwamba wasitumie lugha chafu ya matusi au kudhalilisha wenzao waendesha mjadala na watazamaji wanaofuatilia mjadala huu mbashara lugha ya maneno au ishara zinazoweza kutafsiriwa kuwa matusi hazitaruhusiwa kutumika kwenye mjadala huu the same responsibility is shared by the audience seated here in this uh, auditorium uh, debate rules do not permit any cheers or jeers except now when we turn our attention to the debate platform to welcome the candidates Polycarp Igade and Johnson Sakata. Na mtazamaji kwa uingia katika ukumbi huu tulikuwa tumeweka kura ambayo ilistahili kuelekeza ni nani ataingia kwanza na kuwa pa nambari wale waaniaji wawili ambao tunatarajia kwenye mtahala huu kwa sababu sakaja kufikia sasa hajawasili ina maanisha kwamba Polycarp Igade wa Jubilee ndiye atakuwa ukumbini kwa hivi sasa. And the show must move on, so we will call in this first candidate, Polika Pigade of the Jubilee Party. Polika Pigade, uwanja ni wako. Tumkaribisha na poingia. <laughs> Thank you. Maintain the position of your podium for the length of uh, this uh, debate. And uh, as indicated, uh, our starting time was clear to all the candidates invited. Thank you for honoring this invitation. And that slot remains open for Johnson Sakaja, the UDA candidate running for governor. I'll start with you, sir. And in leadership and integrity, definitely we look at the importance of that within your uh, leadership once you or when you make the uh, governorship. But start us off by telling us what separates you apart from your competitor. Thank you very much for that question and thanks for having me. I'm a product of Kenya's public education system. I'm a product of Kenya's public health system. I was born in Pumwani Hospital. I was educated through Kenya's public education system. I went to a public university, the University of Nairobi. And that sets me apart because in all those three levels, I came out through my upbringing by my dad and mom. My mom who was a primary school teacher, Mrs. Kamau, and my dad, Mr. Kamau, who was an accountant, my teacher, Francis Bogongare, who I'm very proud is watching me from his home in Meru today. My English teacher, Mrs. Kathucha. These people, my teachers, my parents, my early bosses, and my latest boss, Dr. James Mwangi, taught me three things which sets me apart. 
that approach every task, approach every calling with high intention, with sincere effort, and with intelligent execution. High intention is prayer, sincere effort is hard work, intelligent execution is discipline. That is what we call a PhD. That sets me apart. And Nairobi, I bring a PhD attitude to the job. Give it to me. Thank you. Naam, umetaja pale kuhusu masuala ya elimu familia yako ina uelewa wa masuala ya elimu wewe mwenyewe umesema kwamba ni msomi wa maso, uh, katika chuo kikuu cha Nairobi. Je, unadhani ni muhimu kwa mgombea kuwa na degree ili kuweza kuongoza kaunti ya Nairobi? Ni muhimu kwa mgombea kiti chochote ambacho kiko katika katiba ya taifa letu kuwa amehitimu na amefikisha kiwango ambacho kinakubaliwa na katiba. Kwa hivyo huyo umuhimu so mimi kusema ni katiba imesema. U, ni, lazima uhitimu uwe mwalimu, lazima uhitimu uwe daktari, lazima uhitimu uwe mechanic. Hata kuosha gari inahitaji uwe umehitimu au kuwa waiter. Kwa hivyo hata hii kazi ya gavana inahitaji kuhitimu. Na hilo ni ni jambo ambalo latakikana na katiba ya taifa letu la Kenya. Lakini unadhani kwamba kuwa na degree ni isharatosha kwamba utakuwa kiongozi bora. Kwa sababu kusoma ni kitu kimoja uongoze ni kitu kingine. Je, kuwa na degree ndio ishara kwamba utakuwa kiongozi ambaye anastahili? La hasha ni mwanzo. Kwa sababu lazima uwe umefikisha kiwango cha usomi. Lakini jambo muhimu kuwa kiongozi ni kuwa unaelewa maswala ambayo unakuja kuyashughulikia. Na pia la pili pia wewe uwe ni mtu ambao wapenda watu. Hii kazi ya siasa, kazi ya kutumikia watu ni kazi ambayo unaifanya kutoka kwa roho yako. Na lazima uwe ni wewe ni mtu ambaye namba moja mcha Mungu, mtu ambaye anapenda kuhudumia watu. Na mimi maisha yangu yote nimefanya kazi ya huduma kwa wananchi. Nimeuza soda kwa kiosk, nimeuza bairo kwa bookshop, nimeuza pombe kwa bar. Na hivi karibuni nilikuwa nauza pesa kwa mama mboga, kwa watu wa matatu, kwa watu ambao tunaiza, tunawaita via, wachuzi wa kawaida. Kwa hivyo hilo hiyo hiyo uzoefu wangu wa kazi umetokana na kushughulikia watu wa kawaida katika kazi ya mauzo hasa katika sekta ya kibinafsi. It has been the accusation leveled against uh, your side by your competitor. It uh, would have been great to have him here to respond to the question of a degree for governors that uh, the fight at least uh, and the clamor to fight him to qualify to be on the ballot is uh, for the benefit of Igade to lock him out of the race. Just to clear the air on this, what is your response? Um, I really want to meet my worthy competitor on the ballot. The fight is hard, is a fight I truly regret because it's stopping Kenyans from actually stopping him from coming to office. When all constitutional institutions fail in their duty, then there's a duty by the citizen. And there's no bigger duty than the duty of voting on 9th of August 2022. I am really, I wish him well and I hope that he can come tonight. I also hope that he, he will be on the ballot on the 9th of August so that we can beat him at 8.57 a.m. Mm. Na umetaja pale kwa mba unawe lady na umejitolea na une ule moyo wakutaka kuatumikia wakazi wa Nairobi. Lakini kweli uko teari kuingia katika kazi ambayo itakubidi uwe pale kwa miaka mitano. Kwa sababu uh, historia inaonyesha kwa mba ulipo chagulua kwa naibu gavana uliondoka baada ya mezi sita. Hii kazi itakukihitaji kuwa pale miaka mitano. Kweli uko teari? Niko tayari, niko gangari, na nimejitayarisha vilivyo kutumikia wananchi wa Kenya katika jiji Nairobi kwa miaka mitano. Mimi wakati nilipokuwa kwa kiti ya deputy governor nilisema kwamba sikupata ku, sikupata na sikuweza kupatiwa kazi nifanye kama ni kama deputy governor. Na kuna jambo moja ambalo lazima tukubali. Ukiangalia wanasiasa katika taifa la Kenya, wako zaidi wala, wanaochaguliwa kupitia kwa debe. Wangapi wanafanya kazi yao na ukweli 
wanapewa mshahara kwa sababu wamefanya kazi. Hilo ni swali tunafaa kujiuliza. Mimi siwezi kubali mshahara bila kufanya kazi. Na. Unasema kwamba huku kupewa kazi ni kwamba haukuwa na ushirikiano na Governor Sonko ni kwamba ulijipata katika nafasi hiyo kimakosa au ni vipi wewe kama naibu gavana unasubiri tu kupewa kazi? Governor Sonko ni rafiki yangu ni mwalimu wangu wa kisiasa hasa siasa za Nairobi na muheshimu na namuenzi mpaka wa leo ni rafiki yangu hata dakika tano zilizopita tumeongea lakini kazi ni tofauti na urafiki siwezi kuja ofisini na kila siku kazi yangu ni kusoma gazeti na kuacha koti kwa kiti alafu naenda na lala kazi lazima uwe iko kazi ambayo na mpangiliwa kazi ume, ume, umepewa na usipopata hiyo kazi basi una heshimu katiba na katiba ya Kenya inasema article 1 kwamba nguvu zote za katiba ni za mwananchi na kazi yangu nilipopiga reverse gear ilikuwa ni kusema na heshimu katiba ya Kenya na heshimu mpiga kura na hivi leo nafanywa interview kama mfanyikazi wa, wa watu wa Nairobi na nawaeleza nitawafanyia kazi na baada ya miaka miwili mitatu mambo ambayo niliona yaweza kutendeka yalitendeka na tuganga yajayo yalipita ndio hali in respect you did not quit on the residents of Nairobi who entrusted you and in fact through their weight behind your boss because you were there as a deputy you didn't quit on them do you owe them an apology i failed to earn the trust to deliver my mandate as deputy governor i never blamed anybody i blamed myself and i fell on my sword today we see a lot of people who rather than quit their position continue to sit there and enjoy the trappings of power and enjoy a salary from government they enjoy public money i did not quit on you if i quit on you i would not have come to represent myself again through my party jubilee through azimio la umoja and contest the nominations and then win and then be here as a candidate i respect kenya in our national anthem we always say kenya is tahili heshima and that is a prayer and that's our national anthem we put our hands on our hearts and we say kenya is tahili heshima na heshima ni kwamba if you feel you're earning money you should not earn especially public money then you take a bow and you come back for a fresh mandate ladies and gentlemen i've come for a fresh mandate no. i seek to be governor of nairobi please try me unadhani ulihitaji ujuzi wa kisiasa ili uwe kuweza kustahimili mawimbi ambayo alikukabili wakati huo ungekuwa na ujuzi labda mambo yangekuwa tofauti siasa ni jambo la muhimu sana kuachiwa wanasiasa tu sisi ambao tumefanya biashara katika sekta ya kibinafsi tunaelewa na mimi kama kazi niliyokuwa nikifanya kwa benki nimeona wafanyabiashara wengi ambao biashara zao wamefunga sababu ya maslahi yao kukataa kuangaliwa na watu ambao utengeneza sera utengeneza uh, utengeneza sheria katika bunge na kwa hivyo nakuja hapa na uzoefu wa public wa private sector na nasema tuingie sasa let us change kidogo let's change the tune tuingie tupindue tulete mapinduzi tulete yari mpya kasi mpya mwamko mpya tuendelee tujaribu mtu ambaye ana uzoefu ambao unaweza kusaidia kisiasa na siasa ni nini siasa ni ni ile mambo ya kuleta watu pamoja ili mtimize maslahi ya watu na jamii mtengeneze uchumi tutengeneze mazingira tutengeneze jamii na tuendelee pamoja hiyo ndiyo siasa hata katika sekta ya kibinafsi kazi ndio hiyo ya kufanya kazi na wenzetu so nimekuja hapa nimejitolea nimeamua kwamba Nairobi hatuwezi tena tukaendelea jiji kubwa kama hili kufanya kuongozwa na uongozi ambao hauna uzoefu wa kufanya kazi. Mimi na kazi ya kupele, kuendesha jiji ni kazi ambayo inahitaji ufanye kazi na wafanyikazi ambao nimechunga, nimeendesha makampuni ambayo iko na wafanyikazi maelfu ba, budget za mabilioni. Na ndipo nasema nafikiri nina uzoefu. Hii kazi ya budget bilioni 40 wafanyikazi 1015 nataka hao wafanyikazi wapate kiongozi bora kwa sababu wakipata kiongozi bora tutapatia wananchi wa Nairobi huduma na taifa letu 
uh, litakuwa nzuri na nitakuwa nimefanya kazi yangu kama mwananchi wa taifa la Kenya. You do have the decorated uh, profile in terms of the boardroom and the qualifications therein. Politics is part of the game and especially for county like Nairobi and the position it has nationally. Uh, are you confident about your political ability to make sure that you control and you keep things under control within the capital? I thank you very much for the compliment. Um, I can tell you, even private sector, there's a lot of politics. In business, there are shareholders, there are employees, and there are customers. Shareholders invest in employees. Employees invest in customers. Customers pay the shareholders, and the cycle works like that. In politics, the shareholder is the political party. The political party then nominates candidates who come as politicians and civil servants who come as civil servants. And the work of civil servants is to then serve the public. And the public, in turn, keeps giving power to the right party. I am very proud to be a member of Azimio La Umoja, led by the most disciplined shareholder in politics, if I can use those words, Raila Molo Dinga Baba. He has run the most disciplined political party. I'm very proud to be a member of his team. I'm very proud to be a member of the Nairobi team with my colleague Edwin Sifuna, with my colleague Esther Pasaris, with all our MPs. I'm very proud. And because I'm joining a disciplined team, we are going to serve the public. What is, has been the problem of politics is we, just like in business, we have employees. Empl in, in politics, what we see is that you have politicians political parties and politicians who have come together to steal from the public. It's like a shareholder and an employee and management stealing from the customer. That's not sustainable. Um, what I can say is, in closing, that remark is, when a customer loves you, no one will harm you. When a voter and the public loves you, no one will harm you. We are seeing it in Sri Lanka. We are seeing it in very many countries that people are eventually the silent majority we have in Kenya we have a very big silent majority quiet people decent people honest working people who go about their lives they are really tired of the suckers of usual politics of insults of drama of coming late for interviews of <laughs> of um, eligibility to a job uh, you know it just says this is what the eligibility people are really tired Mm -hmm. And I know that because I live amongst the people and I'm a son of this country. People just want a normal servant service person. They just want the, a, a politician or a leader who just gets the job done. And me and my partner, my deputy governor, who's an accomplished scholar, Professor Philip Kaloki, we are just here to get the job done. And we have come with the full blessing of our party and, our pa and we have fused a lot of ways, the Wiper way, the ODM way, the Jubilee way, the NAC Kenya way, the Kanu way, the Upia way, the DAP way. We have fused that, and that is the genius of this thing called Azimio La Umoja. You, Kenya will never be the same again because you Kenyans have decided to vote for Azimio La Umoja on no. 9th of August 2020. Umetaje <laughs> amua kuingia kisiasa kabisa. Na mimi nimekuwa member wa Jubilee Party kutoka wakati huo. Watu wengi wanasema nimeingia siasa hivi sasa. Nilichaguliwa na kura 869,000. Uh, Nafikiri ni na 2017 wacha nimalize. Nilichaguliwa na kura 869,000 wakati uliopita. Na sasa na sasa nimerudi tena kusimama. Ni uamuzi wangu binafsi wakuja kwa siasa na nilipigania kiti nikangangania kiti nikashinda tikiti ya chama tawala jubilee so igade is his own man igade is his own man and he won his nomination he canvassed for his nomination politically within within the party right. and uh, within the party we also had two other candidates my can the people who were running against me also did not have degrees you know and i bet them
kidogo All right, on that point, I think you'll, you'll be happy with this intervention because uh, your competitor for the governor's seat has arrived and uh, would like to now call in uh, Senator Johnson Sakaja. Hey, karibu mbosi. <laughs> Good, how are you? Good, how are you? Good, Karim Sada. Good, Good to see, see you. you. Pole, pole, pole. Asante. Traffic mbaya tutasort. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. Senator Sakaja, why are you late? Well, um, my opponent is used to head start, <laughs> and so I wanted to give him an opportunity, and we're here. Lakini mbona umekuja kuchelewa? Nilikuwa nataka kumpa nafasi, haanze ya mezoe kupatiwa nafasi ya kuanza. Na hakuna haja kuzingatia hiyo zaidi, I think we all know the head starts we're talking about, uh, that is from government, DC, but good to see you, Polycap. Good to um, see you, Sakaja. Welcome, I look forward Senator. to a good debate. Thank you. All right. What separates you from your top competitor for the governor position? Well, um, Polycap Igadi is a great man. He's a friend of mine. We've been in Jubilee together. We've campaigned together. Um, I think what separates us is the heart to work for the people. Um, he's had a career in the uh, corporate sector. I've had a career in public service and in leadership. The problems this county has, the challenges in our city, the issues we need to deal with, need solid political leadership. And that is what I know. Naam. Swala la maadili katika uongozi, lina umuhimu gani katika siyasa zako, katika kampeni yako, katika mchakato huu mzima wa kuwania kitisha ugavana katika county ya Nairobi? Swala za maadili ni muhimu sana kwa sababu kiongozi sio tu yale ambayo unasema ama yale ambayo um, unazo kama fikra ni yale ambayo unafanya integrity is extremely important na mimi nazingatia masuala yote ya maadili um, i think uh, integrity defines who you are and it's not about um, who you are in public but also who you are in private and uh, that that's what defines a leader because as a leader your work is to set a good example your work is to show um, you know the community and the society where to go to and so, of course, integrity is not perfection. Integrity is not pontification. Integrity is not saying that you'll never make any mistake. Integrity is taking responsibility. And integrity is be being able to stand up and say, yes, on this I am right, and yes, on this I am right. That is integrity. You speak about abiding, and uh, part of the requirement for governor is the competence and uh, the credentials. Yes. Do you believe that it is important for someone running for governor to have a degree? It's not just important, it's a requirement by our constitution. Do you have it is a degree? Not, that's the reason I'm here. That's the reason I've been gazetted. I do have all the qualifications required to run for governor of Nairobi and on top of a degree, beyond just the academic qualifications, I have the competence, the character, I have the will and the experience to lead this county of Nairobi. Why is it so contested? Your because as I've said, the head starts being um, sought um, include that. I think, um, and, and I, I feel bad for my opponent because majority, or rather the biggest part that um, his team has been relying on was not to have me on the ballot. I'm glad I had his seat because I've been around, I've been in this complex and listening, um, saying that, uh, you know, he wants me on the ballot. I'm glad he said that, but many of his political benefactors do not want me on the ballot because they know the effect of that. I do have a degree um, from Team University. I presented it um, on the 6th of uh, uh, last month to the competent authority, which is the Commission for University Education. After that, it was presented to the counterpart commission in, the, uh, in, our, in our neighboring country. They verified it. Uh, many people have said that I'm trying hard to prove that I have one. Actually, it's my detractors trying hard to prove that I don't have one. Mm. Now, this issue is before the court. And you know, the reason I sympathize is that if my opponent and his team focused on going to the people, then they would stop looking for solace in the courts. I have it. In fact, I would want to display it today to all of you to see. Um, I don't know how you'll verify it, but the competent authorities and institutions that have to you know, verify it have actually said it is, it, it, it is correct. Na mkwa dakika moja unusu kwa sababu sasa hivi tutaanza kuzingatia muda kulingana na sheria na masharti ambayo tuliweka awali. Kwa dakika moja unusu, endapo utachaguliwa kuwa gavana wa county ya Nairobi. Kisha okay. baadae kesi wasilishwe mahakamani ambayo itabatili ushindi wako. Utawajibikia wakazi na wapiga kura wa Nairobi. Hakuna kesi inaweza kubatili ushindi wangu kwa sababu kwanza ushindi wangu. Najua ndugu yangu anaongea juu ya 8:57 a.m. Ushindi wangu utadhihika, utaonekana. Um, nafikiri vile mmetutawanyisha kutoka wale wengine ilikuwa kwa sababu ya utafiti ambao umefanywa 
na utafiti umeonyesha kwamba niko mbele zaidi um, uh, mambo ambayo yuko kotini yataisha kwa sababu tunajua ukweli ambao uko um, hakuna tashwishi hapo na zaidi ya hiyo kwa sababu kumekuwa na hiyo unajua um, kizungumkuti ambayo imeongozwa na serikali and i have said it you know previously um, who has been driving this and how it's been driven i think by the time we're going for the election we'll make sure that there's even more to be able to show on that so that is not an issue of concern what is of concern to us and what is of concern to anybody who has sold as a leader in the city is the plight of the millions of Nairobians who are suffering the lack of dignity and the lack of order in our city and that is where our focus must be so I do not expect any challenges um, beyond that which because what is out there is political propaganda if you look at the length that I've, you know the state has gone to to try and stop my candidature if you look at the resources deployed including diplomats and uh, you know the ambassador etc uh, intimidation of institutions one revoking and revoking it to see then you know that there's something there and I think um, nothing of that source will you know stand the test of time are you saying that those who are backing this fight for your contestation for the position of governor are behind your competitor yes what do you say about that you have an opportunity to respond um, we are our worthy competitors have pitched themselves as victims and the entire platform is victimhood. That they are victims of the weather, they are victims of the law, they are victims of, the, of, the, of what they call the system. But facts are facts and the truth is the truth. I have said I really would love to meet Governor, uh, to meet Senator Sakaja. I think uh, out of a balance I would, of like, heart, I would like to meet Senator, I would like to meet, <laughs> <laughs> I would like to meet Senator Sakaja on the ballot you because uh, on the on the ballot so that we can beat him and so that the people who are the last line of defense when all other institutions fail prove to him that they know better that wajinga waliisha kenya na waliisha nairobi if any other institutions fail the people should never fail on the ballot na muda umekwisha senator sakaja je uamuzi wako kuingia kinyanganyironi ama niweke hivi uamuzi wa kuingia Kenya Nganyironi ulikuwa wako binafsi au ulikuwa wa chama na kiongozi wa chama Nimefurahi kwanza tumemaliza hicho kipindi kwa sababu um, I'm able to prove and to show that I have the qualifications um, and that is going on I'm looking forward to and I know millions of Nairobians everywhere I've gone to tell me every day that they're praying and they because they can see that big hand um, of the state and we shall be vindicated in due course when this time after this I'm, I'm available to speak to that of course my intention to run for governor of nairobi has been my intention um i've grown up in this city i was born in gara um, i've seen this city when it had some semblance of you know a, a working city um and i've also seen the lack of dignity and order in our people the lack of dignity when mama mwende in kayole had to watch her daughter die at mama lucy because of an ambulance i've seen that and i've committed myself to lead the charge of providing order and dignity in the city. So it was my decision. It is my decision. And beyond that, it is a resolve of the millions of Nairobians to rescue the city from state capture. Your decision, you say, but it is on a ticket UDA under Kenya Kwanzaa. Yes. If you are elected as governor, how well, much of a burden will the patrons of uh, your particular alliance have or be to your leadership as governor? I think I've distinguished myself over the years as an objective leader, as a leader who stands his ground, as a leader who stands on principle. Many times, even before what my you know, competitors and uh, their colleagues thrive on, uh, you know, they like talking about the handshake, I've demonstrated what we call Siasa Safi. When the Honorable Prime Minister, former Prime Minister's retirement benefits were being um, you know, rejected in Parliament because his now partner and brother said he must retire from politics. I'm the only person from Jubilee who stood up to defend. When Honorable Oloch was being fought at pan by Jubilee members on the 26th of October, I'm the one who defended him. When Babu Owino was thrown into a cell and Raila Odinga and Wetangula could not remove him, I went, despite there not being any agreement before the handshake. I believe in Siasa Safi. I believe politics is not enmity. And I want to assure even my opponent that once we get into office, some of the ideas he has, because he's a good manager, and this city also needs, you know, in some areas you need managers, of course, led by a leader, 
with a vision. We we'll incorporate the ideas. Everybody sitting on that side knows that I have no negative relationship with them. And that is the Siasasafi Nairobians want. And that is why all your polls show that Nairobians across the political divide have resolved to support me for the office of governor. Ne, uh, Bwana Polika, je ni kwamba azimio mnaendesha siasa chafu katika county ya Nairobi? Kwanza wacha tuangalie siasa safi ni nini. Mwaka uliopita taifa la Kenya the amount of money pesa ambazo walituma kwa serikali gatuzi kutoka kwa serikali uh, ya kitaifa was 370 billion shillings. 370 billion Nairobi ilipata 19 billion. 5% only ndio ilikuja Nairobi. Nairobi wapiga kura Nairobi ni 11% ya tuko 2.4 million out of 2.2 uh, 2.4 million voters out of 2.2 uh, out of 22 million voters in the country. Now Nairobi contributes 2.2 trillion wame collect Kenya Revenue uh, Authority. 60% ya hiyo 2.2 trillion imetoka kwa viwanda na wafanyi biashara hapa Nairobi. How does somebody contribute 60% of revenue and you only share 5% back? Na hiyo si asasafi ndio senator wetu amefanya katika senate. Kazi ya senator ni kutuyombea pesa. Ametuombea tu 5%. Alienda huko kufanya kazi ya ma county zingine. Hapa ndiyo sababu Nairobi hamna mashule. Tuna nasari pengine miambili 211. Tukona health centers kidogo sana, the dispensary. Na ndipo njana umaskini umekithiri hapa. Kwa sababu watu wawajui Nairobi is unaffected and a Naam. very poor country. Muda wako a, a, very, a very poor county. Muda wako umekusha na ya sasa. Kwa nasekaja, yeah. ameuliza, umetetea vipi uh, county ya Nairobi ulipokuwa senator katika kipindi hiki cha takriban miaka mitano. Jie kweli umewajibika kama senator wa county ya Nairobi? Zaidi. Na zaidi ya wote wengine ambao walichaguliwa kama ma senator. Kiangalea utafiti ambao umefanywa kama miaka mitatu ambao imepita. For the last three years running, I've been rated the best performing senator in the Republic of Kenya. I brought more bills, more motions, more questions about the county administration of Nairobi than any other senator, and you can check. I can see your laptops. You can check that. On top of that, the work of the senator is to bring resources to the county. When I became senator for Nairobi, Nairobi is receiving 15 billion. I'm living with it 3.3 billion higher at 19 billion. That is actually understanding your assignment and prosecuting it the way you, you need to. So I brought that money. In fact, naturally, it will take more than 10, 15 years in terms of cycles of devolution to get to an increase of 3.3 billion. Something so Igade able, says I, isn't quite enough, that. even though you've gotten it to 19 billion. Something he says isn't enough, given the contribution of the capital to the rest of the nation. Now, if you understand the framework of devolution um, under our constitution, fiscal decentralization has what we call the horizontal you know, division of revenue. In that horizontal division of revenue, you have a county allocation of revenue bill where you divide the amount that is given amongst the counties. So, of course, there is a ceiling of what has been given to all counties. What I have fought for is the fair share for Nairobi City County, which remains to be the highest, and over and above what any other county gets. You got you have a response on that? I don't know how much is enough. Um, what Senator ensured persisted in this country is a philosophy that is unsustainable, that you take from people according to their needs and give to others, according to their ability, and give to others according to their need. Nairobi is a very needy county. And the criticism I'm proffering here and submitting to him is that as senator, what did you do to help Nairobi overcome the hunger, the deprivation, the desperation in the informal settlements? Did you bring that matter to Senate? Did you make people understand that case? Instead, what we saw, he was a leader of a group called Team Kenya that even removed incentives for county to generate their own revenue. We used to get 1% extra if you generate your own, own source revenue, like Nairobi is only generating nine, this is going to do about nine billion of its own revenue. So the county, the CRA, Commission for Revenue Allocation was giving us brownie points as a county if you collect your own revenue and you don't rely on the national government. And these are some of the things he did not protect as our senator. So how does somebody fail or does not succeed in their task 
and then you give him the job of governor. Naam, ulifaili katika kutetea na kulinda rasilimali za county ya Nairobi. Na ukiwa senator kwa takriban miaka mitano ambao uh, umekuwa katika uongozi, umeweka mikakati gani kuthibiti na kuimarisha uh, ukusanyaji wa mapato katika county ya Nairobi ambayo yameonekana kudidimia? 19 billion from 15 billion is success. It's an improvement. In fact, if I succumbed to the sloganeering that my worthy competitor is talking about, you know, which, which, in fact, his argument is the best case to show that education does not necessarily equate to intelligence. Because if I bring a box and tell you this is one man, one shilling, and it's a thousand bob to you, and inside it's 500 shillings, would you accept it? What they were offering Nairobi Polycup was 134 million shillings more. I refused with my team Kenya. I said Nairobi has the depth of poverty, that urban poverty bites harder than rural poverty, that you have nothing in this city, you'll have nothing to eat, you'll have nowhere to stay. And I refused that 135 million shillings and got 3.35 billion shillings for the people of Nairobi. If I was just to fall for the empty slogan, Nairobi would still be at 16, actually 15.8 billion shillings today. So I'm very proud, and I'm proud of all my members, because not only did I secure that for Nairobi, I showed this country that there is no Kenya A and Kenya B. There is no second class county in a first class country. And I stand my ground that we must be patriotic. Even as we are in Nairobi, we are people from all across the country. On top of that, I can list you the bills. I brought the startup bill. I brought the prompt payment bill. I brought the National Disaster Management Authority bill in the Senate. I have fought for Uber drivers, who, uh, you know, taxify and all digital hailing apps. I have spoken about the, the demolitions and even stopped demolitions that are going further. I have done a lot. In fact, if you give me maybe an hour or so to just list the things I have done in the Senate. Unfortunately, and I hope the next Senate unfortunately of Nairobi will be able now, to fill in those for that response, because, the time because is it out. is work that we have done. Let's, let's push on with uh, that aspect then on, you talk about not having enough funds allocated to Nairobi given its place uh, in the nation. However, there is the issue of not being able to actually get the potential revenue that it can get owing to the cartels in the city, which have been a thorn in the flesh of the administration, uh, but it can be argued also fostered by the leadership. What will you do to get rid or deal with the cartels? You got them. You have First a minute all, and a half. Um, thank you very much for that question. Nairobi collects, for sure, way above 200 million shillings every day. But what ends up in Nairobi coffers is around and about roughly 40 million a day. So over 160 million shillings is lost every day. That's the fact. We've had a senator whose work is also oversight. Um, and, and Senator Sakaja, mm. you had a chance to be seen in this country oversighting the county of Nairobi. When push came to shove and the impeachment question came to the floor of Senate, it's up to Kenyans to see how you voted. Not only did you, you did not even take a decision, you abstained. You walked away from the conversation. We have not seen you, Nairobi County employees, in fact, we have to apologize to them. They do unbelievable, their, their salaries are delayed, their remittances are delayed, the Auditor General's report about Nairobi City County is that Nairobi City County's close has a debt of over 80 billion now. That is what it has been given an adverse opinion. But have we ever heard once our senator speak about it? Um, and that's why I'm saying the oversight role he did not do very well, and he actually did not succeed in that oversight role. But the cartels we will deal with because we have the numbers and we know who they are, and you have seen them even in the campaign season, Nam. trying to fight and hide behind uh, certain <laughs> <things>. <laughs> I'm actually quite tickled that uh, Poli Kapigadi can talk about push coming to shove and me not making a decision. Before even push came to shove, in like four or five months, Poli Kapigadi quit on the people of Nairobi. In fact, that should have come in the question of integrity. Because when you talk about public trust, chapter 6, at the expense of private convenience, that is the question that we must answer. It did come the up question, before the you question, right. The question on uh, impeachment. Governor Sonko will not be facing an impeachment if you're stuck in office. In fact, if you're stuck in office, you probably would have been the incumbent governor. If you're stuck in office, there'd be no NMS in Nairobi. The reason we have NMS in Nairobi is after Polika Pigade could not wait or stand the heat in the kitchen, he ran away. 
in less than six months. This city needs resilience. You need to be tough. You cannot say that you have betrayed 800 and I think, how many votes did you guys get? 40 or something thousand votes. 840,000 votes. Because you could not get the trust of one individual, yet a million Nairobians have given you the public trust. When push has come to shove, look at the Senate answered. I have spoken more times than any senator. I have raised more questions in the Senate than any other senator. In fact, I have taken governor, uh, the former governor Sonko to court on the action he took on Matatus. The record is clear. This county needs a political manager who understands how to deal with the leaders and how to deal with the issues of the people, but has a thick skin. In fact, if half of the tribulations I'm facing right now in my, in my bid were on Polycap, Azimio would have no candidate. But I have stood. Your time is out. You've stood. You ran off. He'd have quit. Um, integrity. I define integrity as what you do in private. If, if it ever became public, you'll never be ashamed. I'll tell you what is not integrity. Is uttering false documents and then standing here and saying, I have integrity. Go to the website of the East African of EACC. Go to the website of IBC. Check the university governor, uh, uh, Sakaja, Senator Sakaja. You again, you know, no, no, let me go. <laughs> go and that. check what Senator Sakaja cited as his degree in 2017. It's a public document. And then look at the degree he's saying it is today. We don't even know who he is. Is your name really Sakaja? <laughs> Nairobi. Nairobi. Careful. 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 All of us, careful. We can no longer entertain charlatans in positions of high national responsibility. And charlatan is not an insult. It's people of questionable integrity. It's people and individuals who come to steal from you wholesale to distribute retail to their friends. And I submit to you, the man to my left will do exactly that. Careful. I think the man to my right did exactly that by running away from the mandate given to him by Nairobians. Actually, the entire mess we have in this city. Because when he ran away from office, and I think he, had, he said somewhere because he got a bigger salary somewhere, I don't know. This city went into a spiral. I assure you, even the drafting of the articles of transfer, I had to be involved because we had to rescue Nairobians. And he ran away from that public office. Now, if you cannot withstand the heat of a deputy governor, you can't run Nairobi City County. You have 85 MCAs, possibly 40 nominated, 125 MCAs. You have 17 constituencies. If just one Mike Sonko made you run, tomorrow, Matatus will strike. The next day, hawkers will be on the street. The next day, and, and, and you're trying to run this county by being popular, it will not work. Again, as I've said, it is really unfortunate that the only card they had was to try and stop me from being on the ballot. I want to tell you to wake up, smell the coffee. On the 9th of August, I'll be on the ballot for governor of Nairobi City County. And on the 25th, we shall be sworn in. Because Nairobians can see through the game. And the documents he's talking about, for instance, in fact, they're, they're part, and I don't want to wade into sub but they're forged documents. They actually forged documents in court by them. They have tried to... Lakini huwezi kuthibitisha hilo, sio? Of course huwezi I can, because the, the signature there is not my signature. Lakini sisi kwa sababu hatuna hizo stakabadhi, hatuta kuruhusu so kuzitumia. Hapo, tuachia hapo, lakini waja nijieleze naona daka zinaenda. Utanipa na fasi nzuri nijieleze. Mimi nimehitimu na nimesoma na nimesimamia watu na Nairobi. Jina lako ni Sakaja? Not just in, uh, fair, in fair weather. Sakaja ni jina lako halisi? Nafikiri mulialika Sakaja. Jina lako ni Zubeda. <laughs> Niko hapa kuuliza maswali uko hapa kujibu naomba. Niko hapa kuuliza ukiuliza swali ambao kama watu wa Nairobi wanasema itosha. Mwenzako amekuuliza swali. Tuna kwa sababu uko hapa kujibu ndio sababu tunakupa nafasi kujibu. Jina lako ni Sakaja. Out to the issues Nairobians are facing instead of trivializing this debate as to what my name is honestly. My name is Arthur Johnson Sakaja. Naam. I'm the senator of Nairobi and the incoming governor God willing on the 9th of August. Asante kwa kujibu. And I want to talk about water. Let's talk about the poverty our people are facing. Let's talk about sorting out mobility and transport. Let's talk about sorting out our children in school. Let's talk about the issues of the people. And the rest of the games being played by the state and our opponents can then have their way. Because Kenyans have seen. In fact, I want to you know, give, you, give you full, 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 full reassurance. Just yesterday, a few of the government uh, administration officers have called me, saying that they've been coerced into supporting the candidature of my opponent, and they've refused.
Chiefs have refused. Well, we can't DCs have refused. We can't quite verify that. That's verify your that. word. You that's that's, that's your word. The question is, he has have 16 seconds. That's your, that's your word on, on that. But he said, and you didn't quite respond directly to it, to what at, the moment, at the moment, I'm, I'm quite clear, Senator Sakaja. Thanks, Mark. At the moment uh, of reckoning, when yes. there was questions over the leadership of a former governor, the moment yes. of impeachment, Let me you walked works. away. Let me explain Can how I, said it works. But it's my question. Sure, sure, go ahead. Um, when you go to the Senate, I've seen one of the candidates here. There are three buttons to press when you have to vote. You either press yes, you press no, or you press abstain. For you to run away from, from the vote in the Senate, you actually walk out, you don't press any. Meaning to abstain is actually a vote, and it's a statement that you make. That the tradition, because parliament is ruled by the standing orders, by traditions and by precedents, and you know, the, the past jurisprudence that has been set in the Senate. When a matter comes regarding your county, you're supposed to prosecute your position on the floor and then let others make the decision. Because if you vote yes to impeach a governor, of course it shows your conflict of interest. Because you want also to be governor. Then it shows that you're putting a man down. And let me tell you, Kenyans have grace. No matter the ills of Governor Mike Sonko or whoever else would have been there, you never kick a man when he's down. So when you press yes, you've displayed your conflict of interest. If you press no, it means that you're actually abetting and agreeing with what he has done. And so the tradition from 2013, when an impeachment has been put to the Senate, is the Senate of that area actually abstains on that vote. And I've had the luxury of walking out and not being there for that vote. It's a decision I would take again if it came to me. You, and I'm proud you, of had, the a point. you had a point to raise on that earlier. Um, I want to come in and say, yeah, it's true. Don't kick some, a man when he's down. But I have a better statement. Don't kick a dead dog. Um, I, I and don't and know what you'd call the former governor let me, a dog. Let me, no, no, it's not the former governor. It's you I'm talking about. Naomba, I, I, I don't want to kick you. That's why Kidogo. I'm asking. Igabe. And you heard me. Naomba. You said Igabe. you heard me earlier. Naomba, 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 you said Igabe. You heard me earlier. Not kicking a dead dog is actually an English phrase, it's not an insult. It's to say, don't go for somebody when he's down. And I, and I already said, I want to meet him on the ballot. I want to meet my I competitor. I want, I want to meet my competitor. I truly want to meet my competitor on the ballot. But in, I want to remind him that uttering a false document is one of the laws in that this country that does That's not, it is one of the things in this country that you don't even, you're not fined for you are taken straight if you are found guilty. And, and that is for the investigative capacity. We didn't come to do that here. All I'm telling that, Kenyans... That is an allegation. Uh, that can I finish? Can I finish? To what go. the Constitution wants is a competent governor, a capable governor, a governor with a character. Ask yourselves, who amongst two of us can you trust? It also wants a governor who will stay in office for five years. <laughs> All right. You said earlier, you know who the cartels are. Enumerate them, put them on notice on how you're going to deal with this. Earlier when you were talking about the cartels. Um, the cartels of Nairobi have persisted for four decades. Who are they? You said you know. Um, it is a clique of people who have choked the city. And especially the biggest symptom of cartel behavior is in the situation with garbage collection in the city of Nairobi, the situation with pending bills, the situation with suppliers in the city of the county of Nairobi. We need to look at suppliers in the city, in the county city of Nairobi, and ask ourselves, who are they? Do they meet the threshold of our public procurement laws, procedures, and regulation? And we need, I want to ask Kenyans to read Auditor General Nancy Gathungu's reports to really see what I'm talking about. Errors and omissions, the statement of assets and liabilities of Nairobi City County, the statement of cash flow, the statement of appropriation, recurrent budget and development budget. When you read that statement, she's actually saying, these numbers don't reflect the fair data 
of proper financial practices, proper HR practices. And that is where you see the name of the cartels. And only a president who is running on an anti-corruption platform like Raila Molo Odinga can tackle this issue. And people who have been st stood up to scrutiny, I have always been an employee, I've always been audited, I have never taken a shilling that does not belong to me apart from my salary. Now, kabla tuvuke kwake, ulikuwa naibu gavana katika, uh, katika county ya Nairobi kwa takriban mezi sita. Katika muda huo ni ulijukumi kavipi katika kuwakabili hawa cartels, hawa walagai, yeah. hawa watu ambao wana... Na kwanza, wana walagai tuliona na nao, kwa sababu for the time when I was a governor, Nairobi City County moved its revenues from the 18, 12 million we used to find to 100 million levels, 120 million a day. You're, you're never a governor. Now, now, uh, when I was deputy governor, I was in the governor's office, thank you. The, for that period when I was a deputy governor, that is what was going on. And we started to pay salaries on the 25th of every month. There was also remission of all statutory deductions. When I was there, I started the titling program for Nairobi to give title deeds into Nairobi. That process has taken five years, is now being completed as we speak. Um, when I was there, I formulated and changed the management of Nairobi City County Water, the Nairobi Water and Sewer System. The new existing chief executive and their team came in. So there are a couple of things that we did within those, uh, within, within those six months. So we had some achievements, um, and I want to assure you that we'll accelerate them when we come to office, when you vote for us. Kama Seneta unakubaliana nae kwamba waliweka mikakati ya kuweza kukabili hawa cartels na kuweza kulinda rasimali za county ya Nairobi? Kwanza nafikiri vile amesema, amesema vile alikuwa alianzisha na ikakamilika bila ye. Inamancha Nairobi heku muitaji. Kwa sababu it's just demonstrated that even whether he was there or not, it, it happened. I think if you stuck, if, if, if you stayed true and, uh, you know, didn't quit and run away when things got hot, maybe things would have been better for the port of Nairobi. We'd never know. And unfortunately, we'll never get to learn. Cartels are a lazy word. It's a word used by lazy leaders who fail to master the courage and the guts and the resilience to deal with corruption. That is what cartels are. Cartels are a weak excuse because all of these are human beings. If you say you know them, and even here, just at this debate, you're afraid to name them, yet you said you knew them, you'll not deal with them. If you know them, name them. Kwa hivyo kwa mwini kama senator kwa mba kuna cartels katika county ya Nairobi? Sio cartels. Ni wana biyashara ambao, you know the first way not to be, uh, you know, uh, to have cartels in Nairobi is to refuse to be part of that system. Lakini kama wana wago pata wezi wa sema, kesho wakikutisha utajizulu tena. We cannot have that in Nairobi. Lakin... We just need to set systems that actually remove the place they are playing. Don't be afraid of cartels political. What, whatever, name, just, just whatever, name, you, whatever name you, you choose. You, I will invite you on 10th of August when we are naming them. The opposition is not allowed you to name You can also cartels. name them to name, but what, whatever name you, you use to allude to them, how are you going to deal with those Listen, the first that thing you must do in the city, the as I've said, is to refuse to be part of them before you even get into office. I have run my campaign by myself. I have struggled. I have funded myself. I have evidence. In fact, I, I, unfortunately, I, was, you know, I, can, I can table it over here, that even the first billboards paid for, for my opponent are by the cartels. Are by other shadowy figures who are convincing him to get out of office, to run for it. Once you are captured by them before you start, once you're captured by the state, once you're captured by these shadowy figures before you even set foot, you will not do anything when you're elected governor. Number two, we must reduce the human interaction with cash in Nairobi. We must digitize service provision that all the 130 something revenue streams must be allowed to be paid digitally wherever you are. What we're going to do is this in Nairobi. We'll change the governance structure. We're going to have five boroughs in this city. Nairobi North, East, West, South, and Central. Each of those boroughs, passed on to the Urban Areas and Cities Act and the County Government Act, Section 14, will have an urban area board or a borough board. And that borough, there will be an assistant city manager who will report to my deputy governor, Mushiri Njoroge, who we have agreed is not going to quit. They will report to Mushiri Njoroge, and Njoroge Mushiri is going to be the chief city manager. Now, once you localize them to an area that these few sub-counties, these are will deal with garbage, these are will deal with water, these are will deal with education, and all those issues, then you reduce the capacity of that corruption. Before you say, Number of Nairobi ni mazito. Tafadhali, bada ya kuhuze, utumbezi ndakika. 
Shida za nirubu yuzi taja na daka moja. Kama mnataka watu wa nirubu wa sikia vizuri. Kwa hishi makubwa, tumskize, kisha utakua muda zaidi. Kisha sewa muda. Wawo wanataka majibu. Senator Sakaja, we told you. Senator Sakaja, we told you respect. You did come late. Uh, and in keeping time, there are rules that we announced at the, at the beginning of this and debate. And an answer to a question is a minute and a half. And you can see it clearly okay. on the screen here. Rebuttal is a minute. And we did accommodate it's you. It's not enough, but we'll so, give some nice dancers. Uh, over yeah. to you, Igadi. <laughs> Let me move to, this is what we want to do. This is what we want to do. We want to improve the society in Nairobi by ensuring we tackle the issue of hunger and depravity in the city, by tackling the issue of poor quality, poor access to education in the city, and poor quality access to healthcare. We want to fix the economy in Nairobi by ensuring decent jobs, Mobili proper mobility and transport. We are going to form what I'm calling the Nairobi Go Portal. It's really e-government, making sure every we have time and attendance for every employee. We make a fit for purpose government to serve. And lastly, to really fix the environment. Kuimarisha mazingira yetu, maji na mambo hayo. Your time is up on that, but there was something he brought up, and he said even he's, he claims to be funding his own campaigns and says you're under state capture and you have a right to respond to this, a minute for that, in terms of those who are funding your campaign. My campaign is funded by myself and my friends. And I would like him, because he has said so, to provide that evidence before the morning. That is a liar. Those are lies Lovely. told by a lying liar. I'll be glad to do that. Please. You know, you say you have some evidence to this effect. Of course, we have receipts. We have receipts of billboards and of, you know, different meetings of chiefs, meetings of DCCs, them being casual. You know, you, you, you cannot force individuals, DCCs, assistant chiefs, and many of them, I mean, the review and represented here know the meetings at St. George's Primary School, where they're being asked to support those candidates. We know all of that. It is obvious. But if you'd like me to table that, I'll be glad to table it all before right. the country. He I will, so I will but equal I, but measure, I, I will equal measure, measure table all the false documents Senator Sakaja has cited to the Republic of Kenya and to constitutional institutions tomorrow morning on my Twitter. All right, tomorrow morning there's a lot of news to look forward to. And <laughs> <laughs> do you agree? And then you will know what we are facing. Because okay. the contest on 9th of August is a simple contest. It's a contest in this country. It's a census, actually. It's not an election. How many Kenyans believe in competence, character, capability, honesty, unity, moving forward? And how many believe in lies and all the other bad things we don't want and don't value as a society? That's the contest. We've moved into the governorship uh, domain of this conversation, and uh, we just like to cover more issues here. And there is a mention, was a mention of Nairobi Metropolitan Services, NMS. Uh, first of all, do you agree with uh, it having been brought in as an intervention? And uh, in your view, because, was it because of a failed leadership? No, I celebrate the Nairobi Metropolitan Services, the NMS and General Buddy and his team have done a wonderful job. And it was a creature of the law. We saw how it was formed. And because it's a creature of the law, it extinguishes naturally by law in November of this year. Look at what they have done. They have sunk 193 boreholes in the metropolitan area. 144 of those boreholes has been in our informal settlement. That has truly helped us fight COVID-19. The Metropolitan Authority has further worked on pedestrianizing the central business district, which is something we must do in this city. Make sure that non-motorized transport we democratize transport, that the most important transporter is not the private car, but the pedestrian, the cyclist. They have done it, and we are now working, working better. They've really tried to improve the environment. And they are part, uh, it is part of the military to do civilian duty. And they came and answered the call of duty, and I, we truly celebrate what they have been able to achieve. And they are reverting, we are reverting back to a civil authority. As we speak, I believe General Badi is in transition, waiting 
for the election and then for the next people to take over office. He should not be vilified. Quavo, and, and, Quavo. and he really worked and he's been able to deliver. A ba it's been a band aid to the city of Nairobi. Labda kwa sekunde thelathini, wapo utapewa na fasi, ama ungepewa na fasi, ungetaka NMS yendele kuhudumu katika county ya Nairobi? NMS, siwezi pata hiyo na fasi kwa sababu sheria inasema NMS muda wao utakuisha November mwaka huu. But Lakin it was extended and there's an opportunity to extend uh, it. I will give better service as governor of Nairobi than NMS. Bwana Sakaja, on the issue of governorship and how Nairobi Metropolitan Services, I beg your pardon, came in to rescue the day. Uh, do you agree with this? And under uh, governorship of uh, Sakaja, yeah. would this continue? It is very interesting to hear a man praising his ex-wife's husband. Um, the reason NMS came about is because he got the quit. It's as simple as that. If the deputy governor of Nairobi, Poli Kapigadhi, did not quit, there'd be no need to have NMS. Those boholes you're naming, you should have done them. Those interventions you're talking about, you had a chance to do them. Devolution cannot be trivialized in this country. Devolution is the greatest gift we've given to our people. That every Kenyan, wherever they are, has a right to self-determine. I wrote about this in 2010 with the uh, International Commission of Jurists, fiscal decentralization and devolution in this country. That lady in Mutwini deserves a county government and a governor she can hold to account and who can listen to and who she can vote, to, uh, vote for. So you can't come praise the consequence of your absconding duty, of you, you know, leaving office. Because if Polycap did not run away from Nairobians, Governor Mike Sunko would have acted differently. Governor Mike Sonko acted as he did because he knew no one would impeach him because no one wanted a by-election in Nairobi. Yet having no deputy, and not how you'd bring Miguna's name, who is, whoever's name, he knew he was untouchable. So it is a consequence of him. And then again, understand the law. There's no way NMS will operate after August. I don't know what you're talking about, November. The county government that is being elected on the 9th, that will be led, hopefully, God willing, by myself, will take full control of Nairobi. So yes, NMS has had a cocktail of hits and misses, but you don't know Nairobi. Those mm. women who cried when their children were being no. smashed in, in Kariobangi and in Mukuru do not agree with you about Mudoku NMS. Mekwisha. Just a few people who've seen pavements and cabro who like it and who cheer and who know whose interests you're protecting here. No. Una muda. Uh, um, I think we should not dwell. The history is the history. No, no. What the <laughs> but we should learn from history. What the citizens of Nairobi want is what are we going to do for them? And I'm being really clear that we are going to fix the financing model of the city. We're going to have a city that is well funded. And with those funds, with my deputy, Professor Kaloki, a distinguished public servant and politician, we want in Kiswahili kusema tutastawisha jami, tutaboresha uchumi, na tutaimarisha mazingira hapa Nairobi. Mambo matatu makubwa ambayo tutayatenda. Na tunataka kuwaeleza watu wote Nairobi kwamba muta manifesto yetu iko kwa magazeti yote siku ya Wednesday uh, kesho uh, Wednesday uh, in this this week we saw me the abridged version muone the pledges we are making to you because in three seconds we're not able to extrapolate those pledges but I want to assure you Nairobi will be something of your dreams no. it will be a city of your vision it will be truly a All global right. hub in Africa for everybody Senator Sakaj, Sakaj I believe you do agree that Nairobi is in deep debt and there's wasteful use of funds what are the factors behind this how will you fix it again um, I must say Nairobi is in a dire situation that it's proper 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 planning and proper political management. A lot of these issues are relational. If you look at the 76 billion um, debt, including even the 4.4 that is owed now you know, um, to, to KCB, and many of these other instruments we've gotten into, a lot of them can be sorted out based on how we relate with the national government. But Nairobi is not a branch of the national government or an appendage, or as uh, my brother says, you know, the military interventions are going on. Then Nairobi can negotiate. Because there are a lot of areas which we can do debt swaps, but the county of Nairobi owes the national government, and the national government owes Nairobi City County. We must balance our books, and we're going to do that. And we have a team that is, you know, properly suited, you know, to be able to do that. I, I am very, very confident about my deputy, um, Jorogia Mushiri, who has a stellar career as well in banking. Actually, a proper corporate career, not two years stints here and there. 
a proper career. 20 years in Absa. So give us the particulars, though, on, yes. on the issue of uh, the debt that we are in. How will we get out once you are gone? That's what I'm saying. We must do a couple of things. One, you must refinance your debt. You must move what is domestic into concessional, that you cannot be borrowing from commercial banks. Have them as concessional. Chapter 12 of the Constitution of Kenya, talking about public finance, says how the national government guarantees county governments of debt. In fact, on top of that, we must get creative. For us to sort out the real issues of this city, we need around 200 billion shillings up front through an infrastructure bond. I've gone across this world and spoken to Kenyans in the diaspora whose remittances are our biggest foreign income earner who are ready to put in money in certain interventions. When you talk about transit, we need a mass transit system in this county. How are we going to do it? Recently, I was in Imperial College in London, and I met a, a man, a nice gentleman, who sorted out transit in London. He sorted out transit in Beijing, mobility. What's his name? Professor Washington Ochieng. The other day, I was in Riyadh. I met a group of guys who did the Dubai Metro and are doing the Riyadh Metro. George Opondo. There are Kenyans out there who are willing. So we must get creative. Um, there's a PPP department that has been set up in the, in the National Treasury. There's external borrowing. But we must refinance this city. Look at Joburg. Joburg is almost, you know, it's, it's more or less a listed uh, city where people can actually invest in it. If you do not do that, you become a cashier. But you're receiving money, you only pay salaries, you will not develop Nairobi unless you get creative in how we actually, you know, um, structure our financing model for the city. So we're going to restructure the debt, move to concessional loans, uh, reamortize some of those payments to longer term, and have no. an infrastructure bond for Nairobi City. Many Kenyans out there no. are going to put in money on our transit, on our water, and no. our basic infrastructure. Bwana Poli Kaputa, kabili vipi matumizi ya rasilimali, mabaya rasilimali katika county ya Nairobi, ufujaji wa fedha na madeni ambayo sasa hivi ya naangamiza county ya Nairobi? Ah, jambo la kwanza, Nairobi City County gets its highest revenue from land rates, parking bays, um, land rates, parking fees, outdoor advertising, uh, building permits. Those would be some of the top, within the top five uh, revenue things. And what we are going to do is to make sure that we digitalize the collection of all that revenue so that the leakage, we seal the leakage. Technology is one of the best things to overcome loss of revenue. And we're going to use technology in, in the public revenue management system. Then secondly, we will deploy that money. Our own source revenue, I can promise, we and Professor Kaloki have done a study, and we've even checked the reports of the Commission for Revenue Allocation. With six revenue lines, we can generate 80 billion own source revenue in Nairobi. And with that money, we will build a thousand. We will join the government in building more schools, in making sure there's medicine in our dispensaries, in making sure that there's incinerators to burn garbage, that we start a leasing program for vehicles and equipment uh, for the staff, and also to make sure we pay our staff the right salaries so that they are really motivated. We are very concerned about the welfare of Nairobi City County workers and all the workers of all affiliate bodies of Nairobi City County. Only motivated workers can deliver essential services, and that's what Nairobians want. And that brings, it, brings me to the next issue, and that is the competence of the Nairobi City County staff, and you will both have an opportunity to respond to this. How will you address the competence or lack thereof overemployment cases of ghost workers and the issue of productivity to make those staff uh, workers, the workers of Nairobi City County, uh, that they will deliver the services for the Nairobians. I'll start with you. Every employee of Nairobi City County from the 10th of August, we shall have a performance agreement with them. We will bring back to life performance contracting. And that performance agreement means what do they do every day? The few things they do every day to deliver the output Nairobians expect. And that output will be captured in a scorecard. So each one of us will have a scorecard and a performance agreement. The performance agreement is the input. The scorecard is the measure. And who will measure is the neighborhood associations. We're going to run Nairobi with the neighborhood associations as per the Neighborhoods Act. There is an act that demands the city is run in a see-through way. Let me not call it transparent. That, and I want to use the, the analogy of an egg. The executive of Nairobi City County will be the yolk. Surrounding it will be the county assembly as the egg white. The egg shell 
will be the residents of Nairobi. Kwa sababu, we will not pay an invoice for a road or a broken sewer before the neighborhood association, say, of Kayole, says, sends us a photo. So there's crowdsourcing. We're going to use technology and the cloud and a data center that can really be able to serve the city of Nairobi. And we shall decentralize services from City Hall. City Hall will be the headquarters of the corporate services. There is no use for a waiter, like I found a waiter, a restaurant, somebody working somewhere in Umoja, telling me they have to come all the way to CBD at Yanakuja Kutafuta Food Handler Certificate. No. That right. Food Handler Certificate, they should be able to get it in Umoja. Thank Sakaja, you. I think you were tickled there again. Uh, it was a point of the mention, the, the cloud issue, but how will you address the uh, staffing for Nairobi? County. Many of those ideas, really, you know, Paul, this is not equity, yeah? this is not corporate. You must take the bull by the horns and give practical solutions Which to are? our city. And let me give you an example. You're talking about, you know, one of the highest revenue streams, you know, being um, rates. Have you talked to us about the real classification of those rates? Why is it that people in Gidogoro are paying the same rate as people in Runda? which is just, you know, a doorstep away, yet they have Mabati structures, and these ones have five-star houses. You know, let, let's be practical, because that is what Nairobians want to be able to hear. Now, the sectional properties uh, bill that was passed uh, in, in Parliament recently prevents an opportunity. I've heard him saying he's done a study with, with uh, Professor Kaloki. I, I know Professor Kaloki is a professor, and maybe that's why we've not been seeing you guys campaigning, because you're doing studies. But... Look at what KPMG has spoken about Nairobi. Look at what PwC has said and the CRA. It is not just six revenue streams that are going to um, increase how much we collect. Just the sectional properties realignment and the revaluation that starts in January 2023 is going to take us up another 50 to 53 billion shillings. Every other revenue stream then must be geared towards making Nairobians more productive. The NMS that you praise has been going around this city with GSU harassing our traders and our hawkers, throwing them into, you know, those pickups, tetanus field pickups, and roadworthy. By the way, on the 9th, if you're listening and you're a scrap metal dealer, come to City Hall. Revenue has gone down to 7 billion. Why is that? Because you're not explaining to the people of Nairobi the services you're offering with the money you collect from them. We will have a people-centered leadership. Le le cloud is a tool. Now, but your, your, your focus must be on the people you're serving. You can't be... Mudo umekuisha, Bwana uh, Senator. Lakini umekuwa Senator wa County ya Nairobi. Umewajibika vipi katika kuwana kwamba pesa za County ya Nairobi zinatumika namna inavo stahili, hakuna wizi, hakuna watu wa siofanya kazi ambao wanalipua. Umekuwa Senator. Wewe ndiye machu ya County ya Nairobi. Zubida, na mwani kapa mwani kapa mwani utafiti. Umewajibika vipi Senator katika kuhakikisha kwamba pesa za County ya Nairobi zimetumika vya ma... My timer is counting while you're talking. Kama umulifanya utafiti, ungeona zile report ambazo nimewasilisha, zile miswada na hoja ambazo nimezileta kwa bunge. Hapo kati ya hizo miswada na hoja, kuna ile ambayo inaitwa prompt payment bill, ambayo pia wale wengine walijaribu kuweka katika mswada wa BBI walikuwa na leta. Ilikuwa nimesha pitisha kwa bunge. Ukiangale yale ma, e, unajua zile report ambazo nimewasilisha kwa bunge. Zinazungumza, ye, itakuwa ni njia gani tatumia, mbinu gani, fomi itakuwa vipi, Kwa kishe ule jamaa, there's a guy who works just across over here in Kaltiva. He's called Fred. He's one of the procurement people. Akona wines and spirits buruburu. Anasema ya kwamba, wakati ya kiwa job, anasikia hawa watu wa NMS na GSU wamekuja, in their WhatsApp group, they tell each other that hawa watu wamekamu. Eh? Kuna wimbo wanasemanga walikamu na kinini vijana wanerobi wanajua. Wamekamu na subaru. Na wakikuja hapo, wakikuja hapo, they tell each other in the WhatsApp group, they close all the shops. That's why this military you're praising has not collected 7 billion this year. Let's take power back to the people. And you try to define this election. It's not about liars and who don't lie. It's about a state project and a people's governor. Speaking about the choice people's make governor, make power to the people, let's give some power to the people who weighed in on the, this debate. We had asked some questions from Nairobians, and I believe we're ready to sample them right now. My name is Masi Masila Achola, an executive program leader with the Maxwell Leadership Team and also serving in the Kenya Daima Steering Committee. My question to the Nairobi gubernatorial candidates is, if elected to office, could you share with the residents of Nairobi 
what can we expect from you in your first 100 days in office? Um, in the first 100 days, I pledge with my deputy to have a very fit for purpose organization to deliver essential services that Nairobians have been deprived of in the past. And especially Nairobians in the informal settlements and in low income areas. And therefore, it, there'll be executive order number one that establishes a good government, a coherent government, and a government where the deputy governor has clear responsibilities, a government where the governor himself has clear responsibilities, and where we work as partners, him playing to his strengths and me playing to my strengths, but a proper cabinet. Also, we promise you a proper cabinet that is fit for purpose, and the purpose is essential service delivery. The people watching us at home, actually, they just want services. They want water in their taps. They want garbage collected. They want storm drains covered. They want pedestrian walks repaired. They want markets made. They don't want to continue selling uh, like um, on the road on the roadsides. They want their bills on time, and they want to be treated with honor, and they want to be treated like citizens of Kenya, and they want to be enabled to do their businesses. So the first 100 days is about reconstructing the organization called Nairobi City County because it does not exist and we have a lot of demotivated employees. Make sure that we convince them, they start to see their salaries are paid, they are well taken care of, career development Ma'am. is sorted. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I, I want to thank uh, the lady from Maxwell for that question. Uh, Maxwell Leadership Institute on um, uh, Valley Road is an extremely important you know, pillar in mentoring many of our young people. I have, I have actually taught many programs of leadership there and I've been a participant in that. Um, I think when, the, when she asked 100 days, maybe what she wanted to hear from me, Polly was just to say I will not quit first, you know, as the beginning. Thanks for answering for me. Yeah, Go ahead. <laughs> please keep reminding people because people are afraid. To to watch okay. But secondly, I want to say this. Um, in the first 100 days, I've said that you will not sort out Nairobi um, using quick fixes. The issues of this city don't need 100, and I'm not seeking 100 day term. It's not quick fixes or bandage uh, solutions that will sort it out. We have a 10 year vision and a five year vision with milestones. But in the first 100 days, what we're going to do, number one, is to um, you know, implement the Urban Areas and Cities Act together with section 14 of the um, County Government Act to create the five boroughs that I'm talking about in Nairobi. That if the person in charge of garbage in Kaioli does not need to think about Westlands, the person in charge of a road in Langata should have nothing to do with the Isambu or Marurui. Because that lack of accountability, when you ask them, okay, Monapa kuna takataka, pole boss kulikuwa na sijui crisis in Mukuru. So we'll set up the governance structure that will deliver to Nairobians. That is the first task, and that includes the county assembly. The second thing that we're going to do is to implement the standing orders that we've actually been working on, even as I've been in the Senate, proper standing orders for the inspectorate. We cannot have people criminalizing business, um, you know, chasing our hawkers, throwing sticks at them. They must have proper, like any discipline force, standing yeah. orders. And finally, we'll implement the one business permit. You can't have businesses with 10 licenses. No. Today there is fire, tomorrow there is war. It will be one license, right. and I will pay every other um, entity that needs to be paid from that one license that you pay in Nairobi. Wanapolika, umekua mkizungumza kwa kuhusu tatizo la maji, majitaka katika county ya Nairobi, awali ulitaja kuhusu cartels. Je, unamini kwamba ubinafsishaji wa huduma hizi katika county ya Nairobi utasaidia katika kusuluhisha baadhi ya matatizo ambayo ya mekuwepo kuhusu usimamizi wa huduma hizi? Huduma za maji zimekuwa ni tatizo kubwa. Juzi nimetembea kule roi na muliona picha Sikujua kuna mahali Nairobi watu ubeba maji bado na punda. Bado you yeah, so you learn every day. Now, if you go to Roy, if you the problem is a problem of way leaves, which the senator perhaps was even ignored in Senate. There is a way leave issue between Kiambu and Nairobi. Because today we are consuming 500,000 uh, cubic meters of water every day in Nairobi. But that, that's really the level of production of water from our water sources, Dakaine, Roiro Dam. But the Roiro Dam and the Northern Collector Tunnel, we need to connect it. And I Shida ya Wailiv, I believe dams are for eating and stealing. Because dams have to be done in places like 
the Nyandarwa eco ecosystem, Maragua Dam in Muranga, and, and, and that's why Nairobi has to be secured by being assisted by the neighboring countries to the metropole that is Nairobi City County. Senator Sakaja, the taps in many homes and other businesses are running dry, but their water bowsers full to the brim and coming at a premium. How will you, you sort this? F first, again, it's really nice that we're at a university because I need to school my friend about water. Um, there are many things you've said that are completely false. Number one, the quantity that we consume is not just 525,000 that you're speaking about. Nairobi has four water sources. The first water source is Kikuyu Springs, just after you know, Kikuyu Campus. That was set up in 1907. After that, we developed Ruru Dam in 1936. It provides 4%. Kikuyu Springs provides only 1%, which is 4,000 cubic meters of water. The third one is Sasumwa in uh, Njambini. Sasumwa produces 11% of our water requirement in Nairobi, comes through Kabete treatment plant, then comes down this way. And the fourth one, the biggest, of course, is Ndakaine, which gives us 84% of our water. Now, Ndakaine was last developed in 1997. There were three phases. After 1997, there's been no additional source. So every single day, the people of Nairobi require 850 million liters of water, but get 525.6 million liters per day. You need to bridge that gap. In fact, you'll be shocked, uh, Polycarp. 70% of the people you're talking about, the ones you didn't know carry water in Mutungi, 70% of them, of Nairobians, have never had a shower from to the top. They, they bathe bottom up, you know, like with the bucket. <laughs> bottom up is how many of us shower in this city. We want to give our people dignity. There's no dignity when women are scrambling outside these you know, uh, boreholes that have been created and the water sources every day for water. The issue of distribution then is the next thing that must be. So, you know, I asked about this time thing. Because I've just so had the, the same, quantity. He had so the same when we time. finished Northern Collector, December 2023, under my, our administration, I don't like saying my our administration, we'll move into Northern Collector 2. One will sort out 85% of the water need, and then, I mean, uh, 65%, and then Northern Collector 2 will give us 85%. Now, the second most important You're issue is your time. Let's, 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 give, let's, give let's give him an opportunity. Let's give him an opportunity to just keep time. The challenge of water, the, 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 the debate in Nairobi is not about what needs to be done and how. We are all, there is consensus that we are short of sources of water. It is who will do it, because you need to be trustworthy and you need to be capable to, uh, to, to get it done. That issue of who is the most important issue in this election. And on the issue of water, for sure, we are, the supply and demand, there's too little supply for very high demand. And the numbers are what it is. The metropolitan area, because Nairobi even supplies Machakos, the, the EPZ area, uh, with water. Is an, the biggest challenge is new sources of water for the city county of Nairobi. And that is a task between ourselves and the national government. And thank God we have Martha Karua, the original champion of water, of water as, as Minister of Water during Kibaki's time. And she understands the task, and we are ready to work with her in Nairobi. For Nairobi, it will be a responsibility. On to housing, a majority of uh, Nairobians can live, in, water, live yeah. in, in, in informal cell. And I just want to cover as much as we can. And uh, a majority of uh, the populace here live in informal settlements. And how are we going to change this housing demand and give quality housing and other services for Nairobians, I'll start with you. Thank you. I'll, I'll, I'll just take the same time to finish on water. Um, I've had them mentioning Martha, earlier I mentioned Raila. Those, these are people we all, you know, we know and we've worked with many years. Um, you know, don't, don't run away and hide behind them when you don't have the point. Just say the point as it is. Because Nairobians are electing you to be governor of Nairobi, not Martha Karua, not Raila Odinga. They're electing you if they elect you, if they make that decision, which I, which I know they will not make. You must sort out the distribution issue of water because water goes hand in hand with housing. So I've spoken about the quantity. And it's not about uh, waiting for an angel from national government to do it. Already we're at 90% with the Northern Collector 1. The piping has been, uh, or rather the tunneling has been done. The, the piping is at 34%. This side from Apro Isambu, coming from Kiambu Institute of uh, Technology um, to USIU moving down, is already going on. We have so many areas that do not have piping. I've never had piping uh, uh, in Nairobi. The people who actually build houses across what were the physical levers, they shut it down, they collect water, and then you see these bowsers moving around the city, 
labeled clean water or NMS. That will come to an end using SCADA technology. Whereas governor, I'll be able to see on my phone, Mali wamekata maji. Now, urban housing is a huge challenge in this city. And it's also something that the built environment has made people lack dignity in this city. The county government is not in the business of building houses. We shall facilitate the private sector through proper land tenure and giving them proper land of government to actually partner with them to build these houses. We can actually do it um, through the silo uh, model no. where you, you build and people move and come no. in there. Urban renewal is being resisted resist in Eastlands because of lack of trust of that institution, the body that is praising here today. Okay. I wish you go no. there tomorrow and tell them what you said about NMS. Maji ni mojo wapo ya shida ambazo zina kumba wale ambao wanaishi katika mita ya mabanda katika county ya Nairobi. Hasoni mpango upi ambao ukonao wa kuinua na kuimarisha hadhi ya watu ambao wanaishi katika mita ya mabanda katika county ya Nairobi na changamoto ambazo wanakumba na nazo. So first of all, the county of Nairobi in its own books owns close to 532 hectares of land. On it sits 12,000 single dwelling units. Nairobi has to strategically densify. But that process requires proper, proper public participation. You can already hear my competitor is whetting his appetite to steal your homes. You people in Makadara and Jericho, Umeskia, he has pronounced himself that this will be private sector led. I have told you, this thing called urban renewal, which is what they want Nairobi to take, we have to be very careful. It needs proper conversations um, around it, and we must build housing that is truly affordable housing, decent housing. And we, before we build, we must ask the people who sit in those estates, how will this work, and how will you be compensated? Before that is done, we are rushing, and you've seen a big rush towards that work, and we are saying, put it on hold, the Constitution demands proper public participation, proper understanding, and I, I want to believe that conversation has already uh, not been held. So the housing question in the informal settlements is to continue the work that has started. Roads, water, um, sewer, boreholes. These informal settlements require a lot of investment, and okay. that investment requires a location of our improving our revenue and also making sure Senate allocates us the money we require to attend to high density areas. Okay, a rebuttal uh, in terms of uh, what he said on your uh, housing urban development plan there, uh, an opportunity. There are people waiting in the wings to come minute. and steal your houses and you've had the private he has sector. He opportunity in his time. You, you okay, have sure. an opportunity. I don't know who represents the private sector here on this stage, if you look clearly. But what I'll say is this, while you are away, when you ran away from Nairobians, holy cup. I represented the people of uh, Majengo in Kamkunji in court to fight what you're talking about. You are somewhere in your Bentley, living the life, never spoken about an issue of Nairobians, but now you're saying you want to steal. That they were moved from slums in Majengo, the slums were put down and put in 11, you know, 11,000 bob houses while they're paying 5,000 shillings, 4,000 shillings. Today, the amount of money owed that they need to pay 60 million shillings. That's what someone wants to steal the houses. When I talk about urban renewal, the entity you're praising is rushing. Just this week, there have been more than three, four advertisements on the newspaper for them to engage contractors on urban renewal, and they have 28 days to go. They must stop that, and I'm putting them on notice. In fact, it's against the law. An entity whose time has ended cannot engage in 10, 15-year contracts today. He has, doesn't have the guts to talk against NMS, and he will not. But they must not do that because the people that you're talking about are represented for NMS, five years. NMS is not an enemy of my have not run away from them and they are saying they believe urban renewal must be done. They don't trust those people who are doing it. And you say it's an issue of trust? It's not All about right. oh, the comp you know, who's going to do it. The first thing, no. basic thing that they want is to know that that person will be there to no. do it for five years it's and will not run away. It's First deliver on that. It's unfortunately, it's time out for us in terms of uh, this uh, debate. There's a lot to cover. I believe both of you gentlemen have spoken and have alluded to the fact that you have the manifestos will be open to the public, Nairobians to be specific, to peruse and digest. And uh, that is where we will end it at this opportunity. I believe uh, even the time for closing remarks are not there. Uh, if we probably managed the time a bit better in the beginning, it would have uh, ended up uh, even better in terms of coverage of the discussion. Asante ni sana kwa kuja.
Thank you very much. Thank you very much for having us. Naam, uh, wasema bwa hinga kilicho na mwanzo lazima kiwe na mwisho. Hii sasa ndio tamati ya mjadala baina ya wanaume za mate kiti cha ugavana katika kaunti ya Nairobi. Indeed our appreciation to the candidates Poli Kapigade and Johnson Sakaja and to you the audience that uh, turned up here and out there watching on television and from around the world of course online. Thank you all. My name is Mark Masai from NTV. Na mimi naitwa Zubaida Kome na kutoka usiku mwema. Zubaida Kome kutoka KTN News. <laughs>